Hey guys, hey. I'm not Liz. <laughs> uh, Liz is off in Sheridan today, uh, so I'm here hanging out with Denny. I'm um, not Liz either. That's true, yeah, also not Liz. Uh, yeah. And we've got Justin Main and the cameras and everything. I'll be trying to keep an eye on chat. Uh, but yeah, we're we're picking up where we left off Wednesday, I believe. Where are we yeah. at, Denny? Yeah, well, <clears throat> Wednesday I had this part done. I had the, the pocket and the liner all stitched on and everything. The only thing I didn't have was the saddle string. And the saddle string is going to be for the for this little decorative concho that we're going to put on it. So I added that. But then I went ahead and finished the tooling on the, the other side of this bag, which will be the front side. I Man, that looks good on I camera. Would, I would think it will be. <laughs> yeah. But then I've already, I've already stitched the handle on both sides. Uh, the other, the rest of it from here down is just glued because I I'm gonna getting ready to stitch the gusset on, and that's basically what we're gonna do today is is the gusset and the, the little bit of finish work on it. Yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got a gusset and I forget what size I made it, but I'll tell you here. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not Liz. I'm also Ryan. If I haven't yeah. seen anybody, hi. <laughs> the gusset's three and a quarter wide and approximately 26 and a half long, but I'm going to show you how I actually measure the length on the gusset here in just a second. I want to learn something. But uh, at this end, each end of this gusset is going to be folded over and stitched just to give it a finished look. So I'm going to put a little seam in on here. I guess I could have just uh, Use basting tape, which I will on the other end. But I didn't think about that. At first. Let me get the hair dryer here. Let's see, I got a lighter. We can do it the fast one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way I used to do it. Like just like fixing a spare tire. Yep. People didn't know what I talked about when I talked about the spare tire deal. Yep. Obviously you do. Yep, a little starter fluid in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, not overwhelmingly safe way to seat a seat the bead of a tire. Well, they, no, it, oh, that's how that's they used thinking. to patch patch the tire. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, they, because they would use a type of contact cement and a, oh. and a rubber patch, and they'd they'd rough it all up, and then they'd spread the contact cement on, and then they'd light that sucker. Oh, that makes sense. I was thinking when you uh. Shoot a little starter fluid in a uh, in the tire before, while you're trying to seat the bead on the rim. Yeah. And then you like that and it just poof. Yeah, that works too. Seats it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to stitch this, but first I better see Alrighty. what kind of stitch length I've got going here. Well, while Denny's getting that set up, uh, this is a wallet Anderson made for one of our recent uh, Instagram posts. And we're starting to get a little more. Back in the habit of showing off some new leathers and things on our Instagram. Uh, so this is one of our new Oxford colors. It's the Sunflower Oxford Excel. Just beautiful oil tans. Uh, and then we've got a turquoise-ish kid skin in here. And, uh, Andy did a great job. This is also a little bit of a sneak peek at an upcoming uh, change to a roper option for us with tea pockets. And it's great, the uh, tees don't end up super thick. You still keep a pretty low profile wallet. But yeah, so look forward to seeing more, you know, new leathers getting shown off. Something we kind of got out of the habit of for a minute, so we're, we're having a lot of fun with it lately. Alright, I'm gonna try this. Let's see, Ron, sorry, Denny, Denny Dunn did the tooling, but hey, there it is. It still looks great. Yeah, if you are just wanting to see some cool tooling, the uh, last Friday of the month, right, we do the trading cards? Yes, last Friday of the month. Yeah, last Friday of the month is trading cards. Those are always an awesome time to see some tooling. Uh, that, that'll be next Friday, will it not? Yes. I believe so, yeah. Okay. And you usually get to see Kevin just sit down and go, well, I guess I'll figure something out, and then do a beautiful piece. Yeah. 
Just off the top of his head like he's been playing it for a week. Kevin did some trees last week. He, he? he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, why don't you do some of your trees? He you said, well, I haven't done those for a while. <laughs> and boy, Kevin can do trees. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff he can just knock out baffles me every time. I'd better get a board up here. See? There you go. I see. You got, do you guys Skype the other end of that yet? Or no. Not yet. I'm, because I don't know exactly how long I'm going to have it. Yet. Ah. I'm just trimming that. Just let me get that tidy. All right. Now I'm going to stitch this one first. Sunflower toying would be cool, Christine. That's uh, we've got some patterns from Jim that I haven't taken the time to sit down and try and learn yet from uh, Jim Linnell. And yes, the Sergey stamps we've got coming are awesome. A lot of cool new ones coming in. Oh, Chevy guy's heading to Sheridan. Hey, nice. Chevy guy just subscribed. What? <laughs> oh, it's showing that he's subscribed for 23 months. So uh, pretty much since day one for us on Twitch. Right, right. Yeah. Well, hey, travel safe to Sheridan, Chevy. It's going to be a good time out there, man. I, uh, I got to go last year. It was a blast. Got Liz and Chris out there this year, so go bug Liz. Halfway to Sheridan, right? Like Nebraska? Closer than we are. That's for sure. Yeah, Nebraska just that just crossed the line from Sinky. Hop skip and jump. Nebraska too, so. Yeah. I could be wrong on that one. I know he's not on the Iowa side of it. Yeah. Let me see here. Better make sure I stitch her right. She meant the right side of this. <laughs> That's I always the I've fun part. I've been not to. Yup. Yeah, I do the same. Do you want to straighten that? Yeah. Just... How's that? Oh yeah, now I can see it. Sorry, wait, I'm going to move you. Hey. Okay, now I'm not, I'm not going to cement the last part of this yet because I still have to uh, figure my length mm -hmm. and skive this one end and fold it and stitch it before I cement the rest of it all together. Bear me able to skive it while it's glued up? Well, yeah, because I'm just I'm just gluing to here, so this Oh, part leaving plenty of tail. Gotcha, gotcha. I was excited when Justin asked me to do the video with Denny today because I always get to learn something new when I get to work with Denny. <laughs> I learn something new every time I do something. Right. About the best way to do it. I think every time I've finally figured out, nope, I got it. I got the math right on this gusset. It's going to be bang on first try. Never yeah. is. Especially with a, a soft gusset like this. Yep. Because it's so stretchy. And when you go around these corners, mm -hmm. it'll stretch out or shrink maybe. <laughs> yep. You, you never know what it's going to do. I've had some where I had, the, I mean, I swear the math was right. I get done sewing it and I've got about a, or just pinning it together just to check it with some clips. And I've got about an inch and a half loop in the middle that it's throwing just because it stretches. Yeah. Well, me and math don't get along well together <laughs> anyway. So. Most people that have watched a few of these videos realize that. I always try to get the math work, but I also give up pretty fast on it. <laughs> My uh, standard method is kind of like you're talking, just stretch it, or cut it long and trim it. Yeah, this is a surefire method. Mm-hmm. You can always cut more off. You can't add any more back. I say it's surefire. Maybe it's not. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out here how surefire this is. See, so how did you tool the cross hatch? Oh, are you talking about this pattern here, Dan? Or Dean? Or this the cross, one here. the cross hatch. This I just used a, a tickler or a, some people call it a creaser, mm. and a straight edge. Yep. There you go. So okay. there's a little. Oh, go ahead. Okay, now I'm around here to where I've stopped gluing, so I'm just going to do this by hand. Come around here, and right here is the end. 
that will be my fold right there. Yep. Gives you a little bit to catch that last yeah. couple stitches on your handle. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna do... In there, that's where I'll fold. I'm gonna cut it off about right there. That'll give me plenty to fold, plenty to the sky. Yep. Okay, I need to get a piece of granite up here to sky. <laughs> I'm going to use my handy dandy Hicks skiving knife again. I've come, I've come to really enjoy this. I love those Japanese style skiving knives. They're just fantastic. I'd never used one to speak of, but the other day I got this out and thought, I'm going to try it because I've got to do a video on it mm -hmm. pretty soon. It, it's fast. Well, it's pretty controllable. That's what I like about it. Yep. I, I, I have a little harder time getting a long skive on it. But just skiving the quick edge for like a wallet, oh man. Alright. I want to come back here and remark this. It's remarkable. Uh, Dean on that cross hatcher, uh, so the the tool he used to mark his cross hatching he was talking about is just a creaser. It just uh, makes an indention. It doesn't really bevel or cut or nothing. It just sort of dents in the leather slightly. So it's almost like uh, you can use, use you can a bone use, folder or something like that. You can make those lines too. Yeah, you can use a bone folder. You can use a stylus. One of those mm -hmm. ballpoint styluses works well. Crease those little guys. They've got like uh, two wings that you can adjust usually on the Western style ones. And yeah. they're just for adding a kind of decorative crease. Yeah. <laughs> long but, things. Yeah, but that's not the type of creaser I use. I use no. just a single edge creaser. Single, yeah, just freehand kind of creaser. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, that knife, no, we do not, we do not sell this one. Uh, the closest thing we have is the uh, Ivan mini round knife. Um, and I love that thing. I use mine we, just we nonstop. Sell, we sell several. Do we have? Uh, I think we do. I'll yeah. look it up for you guys. Look it up, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll I said I've got my little round knife in my bag too, if anyone wants to see that. But I think I've brought it in on a couple videos. Yeah, this specific one we definitely don't sell. Yeah, yeah uh, that's a custom made. This, yeah, one of Denny's fancy tools. <laughs> it's one. That uh, Tony and Liz have Mr. Hicks make for me. They get you all sorts of presents. Well, we sell like the French skiving, that round head knife. I don't think we have that style of skiving. Yeah, we got a lot of options for skivers though. So do I have one that we got? Uh, the round knife, the angled trim, and the mini round. Okay, yeah, I couldn't remember what, which ones they were. Yeah. That angle trim is pretty slick. I like it. Yeah, I've got a couple of the cheapo uh, Amazon Japanese style skivers. Take the time to fix the bevel, they're fine. <laughs> Steel's not great, but uh, they'll work. The uh, Ivan Mini Round, though, those things, I've been just over the moon with mine since we got them in. We finally got some more in. Did we? Yep. Uh, there's People some. Caught on to those knives. I think they were buying about a multiple. I know. I bought three. <laughs> I guess no. I only bought two. One for myself. One for my dad. But they're they're fun too. Make a little leather stack handle for them. Uh, just scale handle. All right, now I'll finish my little cement job here. Yeah. But that's how I figure the length on it. Just mm -hmm. Do one side all the way around except for the last little part. So I was being asked you the other day, but it didn't. Uh, what's the sponge under the front of your glue pot do for you there? 
because a lot of times all the glue will set up here mm -hmm. and so this the the actual reservoir up here is full mm -hmm. the sponge tilts it back so that cement yeah. falls to the back so you don't end up getting way more glue than you need every yeah. stinking time yeah well and my brush rests in there all the time when it's full it's up here on my brush yeah. you know ruins it I got you. That makes sense. Here's your fancy tip from Danny today. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tip. <laughs> And I didn't, uh, I didn't scratch up the, the smooth side of my leather because this doesn't need to hold very much. Right. If you're using a real stiff gusset, that's a different story. But this, this gusset is real drapey, real mm -hmm. limber. And as long as it's tacked down to sew. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go to the machine here. Now the, uh, the gut wrenching seam to sew. No, the other one's going to be the gut wrencher. I guess, yeah, the last one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll see some really, uh, back on the creasers, You'll see some really fine little creasers used by a lot of uh, Japanese leather workers. Um, a lot of those really high finish, uh, high polish wallets and things, you'll see just a slight line kind of creased up right above, right at the top of the pockets. And gosh, they look nice. I mean, it's a very, very specialized high end finish touch that not everybody uses. On these panels, Dave, did you groove them and then antique down in that groove? Yeah, I, I did the stitch groove before I antiqued. That's fantastic. It looks really good. Yeah, it makes your stitches look pretty nice. And when you uh, have a stitch groove, it's a lot easier to stitch a smooth line. Yeah, yeah. That's something I always forget is, on those machines, that needle moves more than you'd think it does. It's got a little more play in it side to side. Yeah, he's got a creaser in there, Dean, uh, to make the lines, and then those stamps, some sort of little camouflager type stamp he's got, and it looks like a flower center in the middle as well. Uh, kind of a, a manual quilted pattern, rather than using a quilting stamp. Gives it that nice pucker. Man, your stitch length worked out exactly right, Danny. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> it's always nice when you do. I might not be so lucky next time around. Yeah, Ron, you got it. He did that cross-hatching with his creaser and then went in with that uh, flower center and little <sighs> camouflager. See what I did there? What'd you do? I missed. Oh, he missed. Yep, just as we talked about how you can get away with it. <laughs> So now you guys are getting to see the real, the real tricks. Yep. Oh, too far. Too far. There we go. So you guys can see a little better what's going on. Yeah. I was so careful. I made a nice back stitch and all that. Now I got to undo that. Yep. We've got this knife. This yeah. Knife. yeah, it's the the angled trim knife. Um, put a on it. Yep, comes without a handle. Did you make this handle, Denny? No, it, that comes with a handle. What? When did we get these? Uh, 
maybe we aren't selling that knife. I think we've got the handle list. I know, I know they sent us that one. Yeah, they sent, I think that one was sent as a sample, but the ones that we ended up with are, you have to do your own handling. Like, it's yeah. just like you said, you have to do your own handle. Oh. Which, this is a pretty stellar handle on that one, it's beautiful. I will double check, but I'm pretty sure that's... Yeah. I don't know, we do sell them with the handle. Uh, Bill, we'll get around, we'll get in close on the uh, tooling here in a minute. Uh, yeah, so this border... There you go. Here we go, yeah. This border is a really... Oh, it's just some sort of border stand. Which, this guy here? Oh, that that is a uh, Clay Miller stamp. Clay Miller stamp. Yeah. So we'll bring it up here, uh, so you can see that stamp. It's a gorgeous one. Yeah, it's really nice. I've got that in three sizes. So it's got a nice camouflage background to it, and then that really lovely little flourish to it. And then yeah, this is a uh, it's Barry King basket weave, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think that he called that a a lined block stamp or yeah. something like that. And then we've got, you know, camp flasher on the edge, of course. You can see he hits the flower centers on those points. It just really or cedars rather on the points. Just really cleans up that look. And I'm gonna spend this afternoon um, getting all the tool lists together, get everything gonna use that we sell. Yeah. And yeah. Get links to them on this video, and then we'll put we'll, we'll mention the ones that we don't sell. But we'll have to search for those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is that French angle trim knife Justin just posted, and I, I like these things a lot. I need to pick one up for myself, just because as much as I like the uh, the one knife for everything. I mean, I've seen people that use nothing but the Japanese Skyvers. I love that, but I also like having. A thousand knives, it's fun. And then I can have a good excuse to take a whole Sunday afternoon to sharpen all my knives. <laughs> Never had too many tools. Nah. Ah, got it that time. Hey, there we go. Here's Rusty peeking in the door. <laughs> Rusty, he doesn't like us anymore, you know, right? I can't hear you, right? <laughs> yeah, we're telling everyone else you don't like yeah, us. Yeah, okay. We'll hold it down now. <laughs> we'll we'll straighten up right. We mentioned a few things, but now we're not going to. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you either way. How's it going, Rusty? It's coming together, slow but sure. We're going to have this auction, whether it kills everybody. That's what I was going to ask you about. How is the auction coming? It's coming good. No, we're, we're trying to get a new fence and gate built and all that done, and just getting it nice and presentable and so making, it, making it easy for people to get around. And Allie said she's having a blast getting ready for it. No oh, complaints. yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, no, she's excited. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chipper is a robin, you know. Oh, yeah. Sarcastically speaking. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denny, I tell you every time I see you that I think you're going to do something with yourself here. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll never make anything of myself. <laughs> I've done what I can do. <laughs> you know, Denny, you might be starting to get the hang of this tooling business. Yeah, he's getting there, you know. <laughs> Carry on, fine friends. Yeah, thank you. Take it easy, Good Rusty. Good to see you, Rusty. All right. Now I can stitch, or I can cement the, the rest of it. The whole side. I forgot that one little tag to yeah. trim off. Snuck up on you. Yeah, sorry, Dean, that's the trick with the tooling stuff, is it turns a two-part bag-making video into a eight-part tooling video. Uh, yeah, really, you guys, if if you're going to see tooling from me, it's, it's pretty much got to be just the tooling, you know? Yep. Because I've not seen Denny really tool anything else this week except this. Uh, We gotta kind of pick our battles with what we can film, but we try to do our best. I mean, come in and take Denny's class, you really just... That's the real trick. I, Denny's class is, boy, it's worth it. And if you don't feel like sitting that close to Denny, you can get a decent version of it for free on our YouTube. 
Now, why wouldn't they want to sit right next to me? I don't understand, but I bet you some people would have some made-up reason for it. Some silly reason not to want to drive to Missouri. <laughs> now, I'm glad I took Denny's class, because I'd watched the videos and such, and knew just enough to be da a danger to myself and my projects. Uh, took the class, and all of a sudden it looked like someone else was tooling on my work. I was going to say, <laughs> all of a sudden, people started getting injured. Yeah. <laughs> No, this we thought it would be just a lot of fun to show off this style of bag and how to put one together for yourself. And I you love this crazy. bag. I, I saw this. Actually, Kevin brought me yeah. this catalog from the TCAA, which is the Traditional Cowboy Artists Association. Yeah. Which is, I talked about it the other day, but it's an invitational deal. And these guys, these are all world-renowned artists that are in this group mm -hmm. and they uh, all tool I think they all make one or two different items for this uh, show and, and auction that they have every year and this is one of the things that Kerry Schwartz had made that year mm -hmm. but there are silversmiths there are braiders uh, oh gosh yeah some of the conchos and hardware in that thing were amazing some beautiful whips in it. Uh, where you and I kind of flipped through it for a little bit one afternoon and yeah. all those yeah. prices let me know I was not the target audience. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this bag sold for like seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, but it's we're talking about Kerry Schwartz. We're not talking yeah. about mm -hmm. Denny Lowe. Well, I think Denny Lowe has some value to it as well. Well, I'd take seven for this one. <laughs> no, but... You guys heard it. But you know, and this is not his pattern, but this is patterned after what he did. You know, yeah. I saw mm -hmm. that one and I, I thought, man, that is cool. I'm going to make something similar to that. Yep. That's all this is, is similar. It's a lot of leather work, is seeing something you like and... You know, yeah. imitating it a couple times so you can start getting all the ideas in your hands and how to shape it. Chevy. What's he doing? Chevy's like, I'll give you seven dollars for that. One. There you seven go. Seven bucks. All right. Danny Low hands. It's on the way. Give us your address. <laughs> I'll need your card number. Well, we got a bid for bucks. 27 there, Danny. Don't sell yourself too early. Uh, so with that bench grinder turned into a bench burnisher, uh, it's doable. Your best bet, if your bench grinder does not have a... Oh. A variable speed. Variable speed, yeah. Uh, if it doesn't have variable speed, you can put a potentiometer in line on the power line and uh, make it variable speed. Because you don't want to be trying to burnish at the speeds a bench grinder goes. Yeah, it's, it's a bit much. Burnisher needs to be a lot slower speed. Yep. I think a bench grinder runs at what, 3200 or 3700 RPM? Something like that. <laughs> and I, I don't think you need, I think probably about 12 or 1800 RPMs is. Yep. tops for any kind of a good burnish. And there's a, uh, I mean you can run by a, I was about to say a Radio Shack because apparently I'm old, uh, run by anybody that sells any sort of electronic parts and gets you a, a little potentiometer. It's just a dial with in and out. Yeah, it's like a rheostat. Right, put that in line with your power cable and you'll be all, you'll be in, in business. You talk about Radio Shack. Do you yeah. know who started Radio Shack? No. Tandy Leather Company. Yeah. No kidding. Yes, Radio Shack <laughs> was a Tandy Corporation. <laughs> That's wild. Full circle. <laughs> Didn't even know it. Yeah. Uh, as far as getting those Coca Bola wheels mounted on there, that's just going to be a matter of turning yourself some special hardware. Uh, if you get a buddy with a metal mill, that'd be the way to go. If you don't have a buddy with a metal mill, Make one. <laughs> Make a buddy with a metal mill. Yeah, Harbor Freight's a good option. 
Uh, they got all sorts of handy stuff to make these things work, or they might even have some grinders with variable speed on them. Uh, I use a Harbor Freight Arbor Press for all my stuff. Uh, as far as putting the wheel on there, I'm not sure exactly what you need to go between the, the grinder you got and the wheel. Uh, I know the the hole for the axle on those grind or burnishing wheels we have are pretty small. Uh, I want to say around a quarter inch or something like that. And most of your bench grinders are going to be larger. Uh, so you'll probably have to make yourself some sort of reducer or just attachment, attachment to make it work. Uh, Michael, no, we do not have a pattern for this purse, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't think we would feel good about selling a pattern for this purse. Yeah. It was curious how you get Yeah, this one's pretty directly. Uh, but you guys just look at this thing. Yep. And eyeball it and draw your own pattern. We'll throw a ruler down next to it and leave it on the overhead camera so you can get an eyeball on it. I'll just set this up here for me, Justin. Uh, later on. Later on? Cool. The schedule's coming up, and that's not next week. Yeah. Okay, I was like, dude, if that's next week, I have got work to do this afternoon. Next going to be our round table in our. That's right. Yeah, this will be a. You can get an Arbor Press from my garage if you want. I have one <laughs> that I don't use. Oh, the Harbor Freight quit with the Arbor Presses? Man, I'm glad I got one. All the leather crafters. <laughs> my, my brother had, uh, he was working in uh, Jeff City at the time, and I had him stop uh, about halfway between here and there for me to pick one up, because we didn't have any in Springfield. Yeah, those things are great. Like 20 bucks for a one-ton Arbor Press. I bought a little more, I think. I think yeah. I spent 50 on mine. 50? Yeah, I think mine must have been on sale or something. Yeah, but mine wasn't. Still a good deal. Fifty bucks for an hour press is nothing to shake a stick at. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, feel free, Striker. Uh, just Ryan at Springfield Leather. I run our research and development department. So if it's about how to cobble stuff together in a way that was not necessarily intended, that's me. I'm your guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, feel free to email me anytime. I'm happy to talk about these sorts of things. Uh, if I can't answer your question, either sure, Andy, can. Andy can. Yeah, that guy. Whew. That grandpa. It's funny. There's enough things around here that we're trying to see why it's broken, and we end up accidentally fixing it, <laughs> which is always nice. Nice surprise. But me and Andy have always, we were always the sort of kids. As soon as someone gave us something, we took it apart. I was a sort of kid. That I would take my bike apart and put it back together and have some extra parts and it still worked anyway. Yup, I have done that a number of times. End up with six screws, I don't know where they could have come from. Yeah. <laughs> Things still work. I don't know why they put those in there. <laughs> I clearly didn't need them. That's funny. Uh, absolutely, Michael, you can you could definitely do that with the drill press. Uh, I'd recommend seeing if you get a bottom uh, like kind of a bottom spindle coming out of your burnishing wheel to run through the bottom of your table on your drill press so that way as you're pushing against it you're not pushing super hard but it'll keep it from moving at all but give it a shot without and see if it's fine you're not going to break your drill press that way unless you're really leaning into it okay we're stitched up you guys now Look let's at that. and I'm going to use a common edge beveler this is a number three and I'm going to use that to actually trim the bottom side so I don't have to go to the burnisher. Now you call it a common edge beveler. I've only ever seen one on your workbench. What is the, oh, the I have design a, behind that? This is what I use more than any. Yeah. It, a lightweight leather, this is not suitable for. Right. Because it would, the edge of it will be against the table before you can contact the leather with the, with the cutter. But gotcha. This, this works wonderfully. This is... More of a saddle and harness maker's tool. That's what's going to take a little hair with you. <laughs> yeah. But this is big enough where it actually, I'm actually beveling all the way through. The, oh, that's great. This, uh, this gusset and into the, the front of this. You can see that thing just cutting like butter through there. 
Yeah, there again, sharp is the key. Yeah, if you've got any tools that just seem harder to use than they, you think they should be, sharpen them. Nine times out of ten, I find out that's the problem. Yeah. That or you stick the leather. <laughs> Same thing with this other side. See, I'm a little bit short here. Yeah. But I bet you. There it is. Yeah. So that's just taking enough meat off. Yeah, I could actually. It's a lot faster and sanding it. I could have actually left this long, mm -hmm. left this run wild, and actually trimmed it off with, with this edge. Every time I hang out with you, Denny, it cost me about 20, 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. good kind. Good butter. Michael, cut the edge on a one-inch slot hole. What's that? Uh, Michael would, wants to know if that would cut the edge on a one-inch slot hole. Ah, uh, it would cut part way. It wouldn't cut around that inside edge. But what you need for that is what they call a tight corner edger. So if you go, yeah, there you go. Which is just like a little a, tough uh, to see. Bisonite edger. Yeah. Only, only the tip of it is really hooked. So you can and see you, the, yeah, the blade is inside that curve. Yeah, there we go. Oh, stand up. There we are. So you can see that cutting edge is inside that hook there. Yeah, yeah, there you can see it yeah. well there. But it's, that'll cut it on the inside curve of the, of the oblong punch or a, a bag punch. And that's, right. that's what they're made for. Okay, now for the top of this, I'm going to use this as another western edger, but I'm going to use a smaller size. This is a number two. That was a number three that I used. Okay. This will do the same thing, only it won't take that big of an edge off. Uh, yeah, Hicks, Texas, this, this green knife is Super sharp. Is that Hicks, Texas? That, that's his knife. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. Hey. <laughs> he made that knife. Of course, it's super sharp. I think you need to come down and see us. <laughs> I mean, it looks sharp. Denny won't let me use his knife. So, I mean, if you send me one, I wouldn't be upset to really, you know, give it a shot for you. <laughs> I look at this stuff before, it makes a really good product. Yeah. Very talented. Oh, this yeah. one's so pretty. This uh, I think this is curly maple, mm -hmm. I believe, is what this handle looks like is. It's beautiful. beautiful. That green stain took so well on it. Uh, who sells tight corner edgers? Uh, that is a horseshoe brand, I believe. Looks like you it, yeah. You get that from Jeremiah Watt. Jeremiah Watt? Yeah. I don't think we have any. No. no. I imagine Weaver does. Weaver They've, used to sell all the Jeremiah Watt stuff. Yeah. I don't know that they do now. They I might. Say, no, they tend to carry a lot of the traditional Western tools. Yeah. Okay. That's done. <clears throat> well, he says he's got a couple new prototype designs. He needs some people to test. Hey, man, I'm happy to. Hicks, Texas. Um, okay, I'm just going to Designing use patterns, doing leather work all day. I would be honored. Some water and glycerin saddle soap and it burnish this edge. I, somehow I didn't know this stuff was an option until Andy used it recently to burnish. Oh yeah. The solid block glycerin saddle soap. Wonderful stuff. Doesn't work the best. Water a water burnish doesn't work the best on a chrome tan leather. No. But uh, on a vegetable tan leather it is the mm -hmm. best. Yeah, I think it's the fastest route to shine is a water burnish. Well, a lot of people, and, and I have nothing against this, but a lot of people use all this fancy high-grade sandpaper, get, uh -huh. you know, use different to grits and everything. Mm -hmm. But feel that. Yeah, doesn't get much better. Doesn't get much better than that. It's, can you see reflection in it or no? That's what you're up against at that point. <laughs> well, <laughs> this will get shiny, it's smooth, it catches light, it looks beautiful, and it'll hold tight. The sanding and yeah. sanding and sanding, yeah, you get to where you can check your teeth in it, but yeah. it doesn't really affect the wallet. <laughs> hey, 
Hicks is going to share some stuff on Discord. I'll make sure you see it. Man. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see him. I always love seeing cool knives. I'm uh, always get excited to see new tools. I uh, stole Ed's advice, or I guess not stole, just took Ed's advice. Ed Labar, when he was up here a couple weeks ago, he had this ancient burnishing cloth he's had for years that he just coated in beeswax once and has just used it forever. I was like, man, I do keep losing my burnishing cloth, so let's just make myself one that I, you know, spend time waxing and getting prepared. I haven't lost it yet, because I keep track of it since I spent time waxing it. <laughs> Edges are finished. Put this away before I make a big mess. Yep. Dump water I everywhere. I already got water there. I didn't see this that. This is a cow though. She's been wet before. I'll say I won't tell this. <laughs> okay. You know what I No, I didn't forget it. Bleed knife? My bleed knife, yeah. Once your poly up there? No, I don't need it. Oh, we got it right there okay. anyway. So now what you up to, Denny? Now I'm going to bleed these saddle strings on. Yep. And these conchos. So Denny's going to teach us the real way to do bleed knots now. Just take this. This is, a bleed knife has, has a broad uh, spine on it and a real sharp point. And these are, this particular one is meant to do half inch saddle strings. This is half inch. So when I put this, I'm going to get right up against that concho, mm -hmm. put this knife through, I'm going to stop right there. So you let it go the length of the Yeah, but it will be the perfect, the perfect size slot for a half inch string. No when kidding. I pull it out, that stays open because of that, that broad spine. See, now that's nice and snug, but it's plenty big enough. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And do you just butt and every I, cut right up against the previous one? Yeah, yeah, just right up against it because you want them to be snug and tight. Because mm -hmm. over time they're going to loosen up anyway and if they start loose they're just going to get sloppy. Yep. Look at that. Well, that's not going anywhere. What is a wax burnish? Oh, uh, just a bit of canvas that I've scrubbed beeswax onto, just took a stick of beeswax, scrubbed on that canvas, and then uh, hit it with a clothes iron to melt it all in. Just folded it up and ironed it for a second. So now my cloth is pre-waxed, so it makes the burnishing a little bit faster. Uh, and then anything I put a little work into like that, making my own tool, as it were, with the burnishing cloth, I'm more likely to keep track of it. Because <laughs> I spent more than 30 seconds finding a scrap of cloth to use. People always think I'm weird because I kind of get upset when they come over and start taking tools off my bench. Yeah. You understand. Right? <laughs> I was telling Denny before we got started, I helped my brother out this week uh, organizing his woodworking bench for him because he's, he's had a busy week. And uh, I just started hanging up all his tools, organizing them, sorting them, getting them categorized on the wall. I told him, I said, I've always got to do this because I hate looking for tools. If I don't know where it is, I get mad. <laughs> that turned out this real looks nice. like a small bag, but, but see, you can fit a lot of stuff in there. That's big. Yeah, it's big. It's got a pocket on each side. Striker, that's it. You got it. <laughs> that is sharp, Denny. Now, there we have it. It's, it's a little tough to tell on camera, but... This is ever so slightly raised just to the deformation from tooling, which man, just gives it that extra. You can see, yeah. you kind of tilt it up a little bit. There you go, you'll see it. Yeah, just that little bit of raise on it. Man, it looks good. All right, That's folks. That's just a fancy one. That's all I've got to tell you today. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the... The biggest takeaways from this for me are just be more careful when I cut my gusset long and trim to fit. 
Because that turned out, I mean, spot on, Benny. Yeah, but if you don't do it that way, you'll get one, the gusset on one side will be longer than the other. Yep. You know, and then you'll, your, your bag would twist. It would be like this rather than, yep. than straight on. But When I'm hand sewing stuff, it's always a lot easier because you can yeah. just count your holes. Yeah. You know, because I'll use the punches just to knock it out fast. Yeah. And you can count your holes and do it that way, but it doesn't always work. And by the way, I meant to tell you, Kerry Schwartz on his bag, he hand stitched the whole thing with French linen. I remember reading that. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I hand stitched the other one, the, the yeah. original that I brought in. I hand stitched it, but this one is machine stitched and it came out pretty nice. Beautiful. So, yeah, let's uh, see here. If you want to go to the overhead, Justin, we'll get some of these close ups folks are asking about. <laughs> and we'll even get them some of the way that I will cheat patterns or if I've ever got a customer asking me if I can make a tool roll or a tool pouch for them there you go Alright. Denny, you made this one a little longer this one's about an inch yeah. and a half or two inches yep. deeper than, yeah. than the original that I made so everybody go nuts with your screenshots there Couple there, it's inches, so there you go. Yeah. And just you know the deal is this is just kind of a different shaped bag, so yep. so make something different yeah. shape. You know? And it's it's good practice, I think, to see something you like and try to make it. Uh I think for me that is the fun of leather work. It's just. it's very use it as inspiration. Yeah. To, for your next bag. That's how I would look at it. Yep. Done. Yeah, and there's those bleed knots nice and tight. Just real snug. Yeah, that bag, I'd say that turned out incredible, Denny. Incredible. If I carried a handbag, I'd carry that. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is that. So next week we have trading cards. Round table. Yeah, trading cards around table next week, so it'll be fun. That's time to see Danny do tooling. It's Friday. The following week, we're doing the inputs on the goods, and I believe Danny, you're doing your hand skiving uh, video that Friday. Ooh, first oh, first Friday oh. of June. Okay. Yep. Is what's on the schedule. So it's for training it. hand skiving. Use, Hicks, I know how to use your knife now, so I'm going to show them all about it. Uh, the floral here, Chevy. That's uh, Denny's design. I said you. You drew that a while ago, right? Oh, for yeah, some that other came bag. off of something else that I did, mm -hmm. and it was kind of an odd-shaped part mm -hmm. of something, but I just put it on there, and it seemed to fit real well. Things that always tip me off to Denny's patterns are the way he centers his uh, dogwoods and these sleeves. <laughs> Anytime I'm looking at stuff around the company, if I see those two little details, I'm like, oh, yep, that's Denny. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, next week, or no, not next week, the week after, uh, I think me and Liz are doing this one. You, Liz and Andy. And Andy, nice. We're doing some boot decorations. Uh, this is something we saw, uh, it's just starting to come up more and more on folks' sites. And this one Liz did the other day, and she just killed it. Uh, I love the way the, the fringe here just lines up right with the bottom of the sole, but in a spot where you're not going to step on it right on the heel right in between the heel. But yeah, so we'll be making some of these. Uh, look forward to that. We should have a lot of different ideas and designs by then. Not to say I don't have any now, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> but I've got dimensions for my boots, so. Well, we appreciate you all. Uh, let's see, oh, the wavy lines inside the leaves there, that's a veiner, a squiggle veiner. In here? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, they call it a wiggler. A wiggler, there you go. Uh, Cause you got, yeah, kind of a scalloped veiner here on the seed pods and then your wiggler on the leaves. Yeah, they're, uh, gosh, they're one of those things that's the trouble with tooling stamps for me is I just keep ending up with more and more. Cause well, that's a little bit longer than the one I've got. That seems nice. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder holster evolved for R&D. Uh, concealed carry purse, that one is it's taking a break right now. I about lost my brain over it. It's a tough one. Uh, but I think I have solved some of the big problems I was having. So we should be 
Should be moving that one along again soon. No idea when we'll be getting it done, but I'll definitely keep you all posted on it. I told you, the Hicks told you to make sure your uh, oil wipe fingerprints off that knife. Yep. Because I was touching the blade, he's oh, mad sorry. at me. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Yep, carbon steel. I'll take care of your knife. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right, we all have a great time. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see Thank you next you. time. It was fun. See ya.